If you're getting annoyed at the lack of consistency and slow progress of your running, then even just making one of these mistakes I'm about to get into could seriously be holding you back. How do I know this? Well, long before I had a PhD or could run in the 230s for a marathon, I made every single one of these mistakes and when I stopped, everything changed and my running just went from strength to strength and I got a PR every kind of distance every single year over the last decade. I need to warn you though, that while these mistakes sound simple, they are burned into the dogmatic principles of running and the online running advice. And I really wish someone had just sat me down who was educated and experienced at the start of my running journey to just say, this is what you need to do. It would have saved me so much disappointment. All right, let's rewind the clock to see what I was thinking at the beginning of my training journey, pre Dr. Will days. Luckily, I have my training software, something I uploaded to every day in 2009, and I'm glad I did, because I've got things like 50 minute run, kept a tidy pace, possibly too fast, should maybe slow down a bit and run longer. Next day, five times 2K, only did four, slowed by 25 seconds per K between the first and the fourth, but was windy. Ah, 5K TT, 18.27, sore thighs, first K, 3.30, so it's a 17.30 pace. Maybe need to pace myself a bit better next time. Man, my training now could not be more different from what I've written in this first year of my training. It's like in every single session, I'd made one of these classic mistakes that could have saved me so much time and enhanced my progression. The first mistake was I had no plan. I remember I had no idea what I was doing. I was just Googling stuff and talking to my fast mates and trying to piece it together myself. But I had one goal, which was get faster. But I had no roadmap to get there. I had no idea where I was in one point of time and what the stepping stones were to get there. So now, whether it's me or a client, I start with a bookend system. So that is, where are we now? And where do we need to get to? This kind of structured approach transformed my training from, uh, what should I do today? Into a series of feedback loops where each session offers insights to help me adjust my expectations come race day. How these feedback loops can be used to enhance the effectiveness of your training will become clear as I work through these following mistakes. Now for mistake two, I don't know if you picked up on it, but when I was reading out my training thoughts, I was sore or tired almost all of the time. And this was a massive hindrance to my consistency because I lacked motivation some days to get out on the train when I felt flat a lot of the time. The big reason for this was I had no measure of my intensity. I just had, yeah, you should run at a conversational pace. I have no idea what that means. And I definitely don't know what that means when I'm not running with anyone. So generally it was more, harder, faster, better right? When we don't have any means of measuring our intensity, we've just got to kind of guess. Now, this was 2009, so I can kind of be excused as to not having a modern GPS watch. But these days, with a smart computer on our wrist, I still see people making the same mistakes. They're going out there with a one-track mind, measuring time over distance, and that's about it. What we need to be doing is measuring each run against our own physiology. And that's where thresholds and training zones are so important. Once you're able to set up your threshold and you have your training zones, you have an exact personalized intensity that you can leverage, maximize the effectiveness of every single one of your runs. You can use it to offer insights into how you're going in terms of progress and what you can expect on race day. And it ties in to mistake number one of not having a plan. When you have your threshold, you have your training zones, you can formulate a plan aligning with those thresholds and training zones with the booking system so you always have a consistent feedback loop. And this is how one Christmas gift changed my entire running career and potentially even my career as a whole. The first, mistake number three. Now, it may not have been super clear in reading my diary, but it was chasing exact totals, numbers, or weekly outcomes. You are not a machine and no run is created equal. Yet it's still a trap. I fall into chasing weekly mileage, even though I know it's the most unproductive way to train. 
So when I think back to 2009, Will, I only had a couple of goals and one of them was a fixed weekly goal. It was obviously get faster and then it was 50 Ks a week. And I filled that with what we all know and love, a two hour long run, despite the fact that I was training for 5K and 10K, still did a weekly interval session, a tempo session, and then the rest was just making out miles with easy runs, which were all done too hard. The threshold running, too hard. The long run, too hard. The consistency, sporadic at best. So now, as long as I'm disciplined, I'm not looking at weekly mileage or duration. I'm looking at each individual session and how that can provide a stepping stone and feedback and insight into how I'm progressing towards my main goal. So I know how to make adjustments and it all comes back to having a plan. When I look back through this, I'm just like, what the fuck was I training for? And I'm sure you've had the same feeling if you look back on your Strava or your Garmin Connect account, it's just a mix mash of random training. And this all changed when I got this one gift from my sister. It was a heart rate monitor. And now my Google search brought up an entirely new world of running. Thresholds and training zones, a measure of intensity that I'd never had in my training before. Once I started running with this heart rate monitor, it made me realize how mindlessly I was training. And it helped that it coupled with the start of my physiology papers within my degree. From there, I'd love to say, oh, I just figured it out and went from strength to strength but it took a few iterations and a few self-experimentations to figure out how I could actually train to my physiology and how to incorporate these training zones and these heart rate numbers and these pace numbers and then later running power numbers into a systematic feedback loop system where I was able to generate a training plan for any distance event from 1500 meters up to 100 miles and have it be individually effective for anyone. So now I'll share with you the six steps that I use in my system to this day. Step one is to create your bookends. You need to put your event in the calendar. That's your A event that you're gonna build towards. That marathon, that ultra, that half marathon. Then you need to do a threshold test or a time trial over the next week, find out where you are today. Now you have your bookend of where you are and you have your bookend of where you need to get to. Step two is to analyze your race. Marathons aren't all created equal. Is there hills? Is it going to be a hop condition? Is some of it going to be on trail? These are things you need to know so that you can put these aspects into your training plan. And that's step three. Create your skeleton plan. You know where you are today. You know where you need to get to. Now you need to put in the days you can definitely commit to running. So you can put in simple basics, just like easy run, rest day, marathon day, high intensity day, just simple stuff like that. And then in step four, you can start to add event specific workouts. So that is, if you're doing a marathon, you need to find some marathon specific workouts. Google's good. My downloadable worksheets are really good. There's endless amounts of marathon specific workouts out there for you to put into your calendar where you've put marathon specific day or half marathon specific or 10K specific day. Those are your event specific days that you'll be doing event specific training sessions. Then in step five, you have your high intensity day. So that needs to be working on one of your weaknesses, whether that's VO2 max, whether that's leg speed, whether that's hill strength. And that needs to align with the demands of your event. If there's hills, you're going to want to have hills in there. And that leads on to step six, fill the rest with easy aerobic running at a volume that you are able to complete consistently. How do we know what that volume is gonna be? Look back on your past training and take an average. If you've generally run four days a week and it's been about an hour, then 45 minutes to 60 minutes is gonna be the plan for your easy aerobic runs. And my recommendation for you to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of your training is to leverage the two most important thresholds in running. Because as I outline in this video here, there's more than one threshold that matters.